15 seconds, guidance internal, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, ignition sequence start, engines on, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, all engines running, launch commit, lift we have lift off at 9.34. The Dennis Miller Show, 866-509-7268. Hey folks, welcome back to the Jabber Chamber. I am Dennis Miller, comedian slash inactivist. I'm introducing a new segment today, and I'll do it with this guest since I know he'll receive it uh, in an accommodating manner. I'm going to say to each of our guests from here on in, somewhere in the beginning of the interview, and maybe not right off the top, it might disarm them to the point that they'd hang up, but I'm going to say, how many reps? <laughs> So we'll start it off with comedian Nick DiPaolo, uh, his website, nickdip.com. Uh, Nick, how are you? Dennis, what's going on? How I, many reps? I didn't hear that. What was the... How many reps? <laughs> how many reps? That's all I'm going to say, <laughs> all my guests. <laughs> Just name a number and we'll move on from it. How many reps? When I'm juicing, 31. <laughs> <laughs> At the Combine. I knew Nick would play. Nick to follow the website, nickdip.com, and Nick will be performing this weekend, January 21st through the 23rd, at the Gotham Comedy Club in New York, and next weekend, January 28th and 29th, at Giggles Comedy Club in Saugus, Massachusetts. A lot to talk to, Nick. I have not chatted to you since uh, the Arizona incident and the, the left's uh, odd take on it. Uh, I, I know you've had your antenna up. What have, what have you noted? Let's see. We got a pot smoking, communist manifesto reading, bush hating, g string wearing, psycho with crazy eyes. <laughs> Am I talking about Lofton? No, Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's unbelievable. I, I can't. How many times have you been accused, Dennis, just because you're on O'Reilly this week of being an, an accessory to the murder? Have you heard that? Well, I'm, I'm sure it's out there in the uh, in the ether somewhere. But I'm accusing you right now. <laughs> it's <laughs> well, thanks for being the first to go on record. That's what friends are for. Listen, they're going to blame everybody but Lofner. But Lofner couldn't. Lofner left a rhino through a bamboo forest size wake of craziness, and and the sheriff who's now going to throw the rhetoric thing out there. For God's sakes, uh, he may, he makes Clouseau look like the Mossad. Where, oh, what was he misreading out there? Unbelievable. You know, I, I was just reading in the paper uh, a couple of days ago, a female zookeeper was crushed to death in, in Knoxville, Tennessee. How long before the Democrats blamed the GOP for this? I, I mean, it was an elephant. <laughs> you know? it, it need only be a tertiary association <laughs> before they fling the blame feek at you. And, and uh, uh, Yeah. Palin's the first stop on any of this. She's oh the junction God. box. And, and, and you know, let, let's tone down the rhetoric. You know, the only voices we should be trying to tone down are the one in, uh, you know, Lofner's head, and people like him. How about Pelosi describing this as an accident? And I don't think she misspoke. She's that stupid. It's like, you no, know, when somebody runs a red light, Nancy, and hits another car, that's an accident. When somebody spills coffee on somebody, that's an accident. When a country lets an ultra liberal grandmother from San Francisco who <laughs> spends money like Pablo Escobar become a leader of the house, <laughs> that's an accident. I'm glad the squad's not a claims adjuster. <laughs> all that tank running over the guy in Tiananmen Square, a fender bender. <laughs> See, Nancy, what happened in Tucson was premeditated murder, you mentally challenged postmenopausal product of affirmative action, you. I, I, I'll tell you, I've never been so furious with the idiots on the left, man. And, and, and this is typical, one of their ideas for a remedy, isn't it? They're going to start a new tradition during the State of the Union speeches. Dennis, you've heard this, right? They're going to, instead of sitting on the opposite sides of each other in yeah. the aisle, they're going to, you know, sit next to each other. Right. Of course, Barney Frank wants to take it a step further. He, he's requesting to sit on Scott Brown's lap the entire speech. <laughs> Well, that's an old ventriloquist act. I remember <laughs> Barney, Barney and the Frank. <laughs> I, I really wish Dennis Words had as much power as, as some of the people on the left say they do. That way, before I go to bed tonight, you know, I could hit my knees and ask God to make sure Chris Matthews' prostate begins to rot like a three-month-old butternut squash. <laughs> You know, maybe him going through chemo will dry up that uncontrollable spit problem you, that he has. You ever watch this guy interview somebody? I've yes. watched him all week. It's like watching Cujo eating a tub of Cool Whip in front of a window fan. <laughs> huh? 
eyeball. They should call it spitball. I, <laughs> I watched like 10 minutes of the show right after the shooting. I thought I was watching a rerun of Turner and Hooch. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Now all of a sudden he's the expert on uh, the African American issues in this country. The oh, whitest guy on the planet. It's unbelievable. Just a spitting fool. Uh, the, the guy he was interviewing, I was watching. At the end of the interview, the guy, the guy that he was interviewing, his head looked like the guy in the sell some blue shampoo commercial. <laughs> yeah, this side's tingling. <laughs> you got to go into him with one of those spit guards from Shoney Salad Bar. Yeah, he. When did he become the foremost authority on, on race? And uh, We've lost it, man. And, and yeah, we have. We're removing, now they're going to remove the N-word from Huckleberry Finn. Unbelievable. And you know who's doing it? An old uh, a white uh, Mark Twain historian is the one who's actually waiting in. Yeah. I, don't want the, I don't want the brothers out there to be assigned with this like they've called <laughs> for this. It's some old white scholar who's feeling the need to do this. Epitome of uh, you know of the ignorance of political correctness. I, I mean, yeah, maybe we should go back and you know if you're going to start changing books, you're going to have to start changing movies. Maybe we should go back and you know digitally remix Schindler's List because the word Jew is in there, and and that can be offensive. You know, maybe we could take. Well, maybe it is we... it that, it's that stupid though, Nick. It is yeah. that stupid. We do, well, why don't we take the swastika out of there, too, and replace it with a symbol that's not as offensive, you know, like a little picture of the San Diego chicken. Right. Or, or put a happy spin of the, the swastika is just a plus sign doing cartwheels. <laughs> they always have happy talk over there. Mark Twain, if he was alive, or Mark Twain, I guess I should say, because we're, we're, they're going to lose all ends. In the, <laughs> so Mark Twain, if he had wrote in Huck Fi today and found this out, he would have, uh, nobody would have laughed harder than Twain. He would have realized the absurdity of human endeavor as far as uh, making everything perfect. Th that's the main problem here, isn't it? Nick? We're, we're trying to perfect a, a quantifiably imperfect world. Yes. I, I mean, and how are people like Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson's great -gen grandchildren, how, how are they going to keep the myth alive that this country is racist and, you know, and always will be if they rewrite the rewrite history and erase any signs of actual racism. I mean, I understand the logic to making these changes so as not to upset, you know, sensitive people who read them today. But it might be a valid point. I mean, you wouldn't want to take John Boehner to see The Notebook. You know what I mean? <laughs> You'd, You'd have, have more... Beach towels. This, this, this guy... You'd have more liquids coming out of Boehner's head than uh, than Chris Matthews' spittle if you took Boehner to see The Notebook. That would be like uh, Leo and Kate Winslet in the downstairs corridor in the Titanic. I, am, I understand a man crying while he's cutting onions, but spending? I mean, come on. Yeah, he's, uh, the, John's a little, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I think it's uh, when he comes in and he's crying that frequently and he's got the bronzer and he's smoking, I think <laughs> Snooky is the Speaker of the House all of a sudden. I've got Snooky as the Speaker of the House. Yeah. Now, we got the president of China visiting Obama this week. It's always my favorite moment because Biden just won't get off the Hu Jintao's on first thing for the entire <laughs> dinner to the point where I have to be tackled by the White House security and taken away because he just finds that so funny. Hey, who? What? Jintao? Who's on? What? Shut up! I was, you, you know, you just really pissed me off. I was looking at that last night for 20 minutes trying to work that angle, and I had no idea how to do it. Well, you can, Biden's like a, a Rosetta Stone. Just go, he's my comedic go-to. If I'm ever trapped, I just say Biden. No, he'll be like, he'll be telling the president of China, no dating before 30. <laughs> what the hell was that about? That was creepy with the kids. He just wouldn't get off it. Wasn't it unbelievable? He's got like a bag of lollipops and a trench coat. Yeah. We we met the vice president today, and then mommy and daddy extended the restraining order out from 30 to 50 feet. <laughs> Biden loves a piece of work. Nikki's going to be, uh, we're talking to Nick DiPaolo, the website and all this information I'm talking about, you can find there, nickdip.com. That's N-I-C-K-D-I-P.com. Nick will be performing this weekend, January 21st through the 23rd, at the Gotham Comedy Club in New York. And next weekend, January 28th, 
and 29th at Giggles Comedy Club in Saugus, Massachusetts. Folks, you know I give him my highest rating not only as a comedian but as a friend. This cat's a mensch. He sits in for us once in a while here. I hope next time we have a break he's in here. And one of the funniest comedians in America today. Go see him. Run. Do not walk. I feel like Joe Franklin or whatever. <laughs> Remember that crazy bat? He was oh, Robin yeah. Bird before Robin Bird was Robin Bird. Yeah. Joe Franklin. I remember he, he so looked... What, what, Obama and, and the president of China, what are they, they're going to be talking about world currency, right? The yen versus the dollar. <laughs> this is going to be the first time, Dennis, in history that a black guy and a Chinese guy are going to be arguing about money, and it's not going to be happening in the parking lot of the Peking Gardens. I don't want to say the Chinese currency is artificial inflated, but they just replaced a picture of Mao and the money with Barry Bonds. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's all this talk about raising the debt ceiling? The way I see it, Dennis, we owe China the most money of any nation. The average Chinese person is what five foot three. If anything, we could lower the ceiling, and nobody's even going to notice. <laughs> It's like that movie about John Malkovich that takes place in between floors, the lowered, the lowered ceiling. All right, Nikki, good to talk to you, brother. Always, uh, always make a lot of sense and always wipe me out simultaneously. Nick DiPaolo, nickdip.com. Back after this on the Dennis Miller Show. Yeah. 